Thank you. Um, thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation. It's lovely to be here. Um, so today, again, this will be a bit of a tangential talk to the rest of this week, really. Um, so I'm interested in understanding um, the higher level irreducible modules for psychodynamic PLR algebras. Uh, so I want to marry different worlds, different levels to try and understand the high levels from um, lower levels. So, okay, so we'll first look at some background. Um, much of this will be familiar thanks to several talks this week. Um, so um, first going to look at the KLR algebras and going to be in type A. Um, so throughout we're going to have our parameters and um, F will be arbitrary unless specified otherwise. And we've got a quantum characteristic, um, either finite or infinite. Um, and I'll be particularly interested in the finite quantum characteristic case. Okay, so we're going to set i to be um, uh, an integer z mod e z um, for finite e, and for a positive root, we're going to define a set i alpha to be an n tuple of entries um, in z mod e z, such that um, these correspond to our symbol roots. So we have our affine KLR algebra and this way of rank N, so of rank N, um, we can decompose it in terms of um, our positive roots of height N. And where each of these has three sets of generators that we have seen. So in Ben Webster's talk, he gave um, the generators and uh, many of the relations in terms of diagrams. Um, so we've got our EIs or our idempotents depending on some weights and um, boldified I. So these are just our string diagrams um, at the bottom. We've got our Ys, which are like our useless math elements. So these are our dots on our strands. And we've got our side generators um, that are our deformed coxigen generators. Um, so this is. A nice average of from my perspective because it exhibits a non-trivial Z grading on it. So um, we can often use that um, to understand the ungraded representation theory in this algorithm. Okay. So but, um, the goal really is to understand the representation theory um, of the of cyclotomic quotients of these Appen KL algorithms. So again, we can have another parameter which will be our multi-charge um, based on our level L. So this is an L tuple of um, entries, Z mod EZ. Um, so for the purposes of this talk, I will be focusing on level one and level two. Um, so we'll just be looking at a phi charge. And so this uh, has an associated dominant weight. So we're going to take this dominant weight associated to the multi-charge to give us our cyclotomic KLR algebra. And so again, we get a decomposition um, of the cyclotomic algebra of rank N in terms of positive roots of height N. But we've got one extra relation, our cyclotomic relation. And um, again, we saw in Ben's talk um, that we have the single relation. So we've got on our very first strand, we've got um, dots. Um, that will kill our idempotent. And so if we're in level two, we'll have at most um, two dots um, uh, in this relation. Okay, and so again, um, we have a Z grading on this. And as um, we know, we've got an isomorphism theorem and um, goes between the blocks of our cyclotomic KLR algebras and the blocks of the cyclotomic Hecker algebras, um, which we have seen as the Riki Kawiki algebras. Um, so we have nice morphism both in the finite E type and the infinite um, E type. Um, so over in the symmetric group world, um, uh, this means that we were we now can understand the symmetric group and it's associated algebras from the point of view of the Kähler algebras together with this um, set grading. Okay. So now we want to understand what the standard modules are. 
for this um, these are of course um spec modules that are indexed by uh, multi partitions which are um of n so we've got an l tuple of partitions so in level two we see um we'll be working with five partitions um so we can uh construct spec modules over the cyclotomic PLR algebras and we have an explicit presentation um, given generated by this Z lambda. And moreover, we get a basis that is homogeneous. So the basis is um, indexed by common control objects, our standard tableau. And as we saw yesterday, um, reduced expressions play an important role. So we have an action of our symmetric group on our standard tableau. So corresponding to the permutations, we can write out the reduced expressions and these will form um, our standard basis elements. Um, okay, and it also inherits this Z grading from the cyclotomic KLR algebra. And this is can be defined combinatorially um, from our tableau in terms of um, addable and removable nodes of section residues. Okay. Um, moreover, we have got two um, dual constructions of spec modules, depending on which world that I work in. Um, so I, I personally work in the column spec module or the uh, but we also have another construction that's um, determined by rows. So in the presentation of the spec module, um, we've got some relations that straighten out either the columns or the rows. So it depends on your preference. Um, because these are too dual to each other, um, we do get an isomorphism um, in terms of the sign representation. Um, so our uh, spec module, is isomorphic to um, the dual spec module under the sign representation up to um, conjugating our partition. So um, this is only for level one um, for where, so this denotes the conjugate partition where you swap the columns and the rows but for higher levels, you move around the different components in your partition as well. Um, so uh, from the perspective of this talk, and where we're interested in irreducible modules, um, this means that um, you don't really, you don't need to look at conjugate partitions. You can just look at one family and the other will come for free via this isomorphism. And one should note that this is, a, this is graded, but um, I will be forgetting the grading throughout this talk because it is um, not of importance. Um, Okay, so first we're going to look at some combinatorics, which again, it's a little bit we've seen this week, um, but it um, is important. So some of the representation theory um, of the spectral group and associated algebras, um, the hook lengths play an important role. So um, this is given essentially by taking um, a hook, which has an arm and a leg and the node, and that is the hook length of a particular node in a Young diagram. So if we look at this partition, 9853, um, it has a corresponding Young diagram, and of course the hook length of the node um, in purple um, is precisely the sum of all the boxes highlighted. And one of the things we can use hook length for is um, to be able to count the sum of tableau. So we have a celebrated hook length formula, and so we can easily compute the dimensions of our standard modules in terms of perfects. Okay. And um, one can also consider more general perfects so that go along the rim of our Young diagram. And one can consider if there are any rim hooks of length E. If one cannot remove um, such a uh, hook, then we have an equal. So our equals, for example, we could take our quantum character six and this partition that we started with above 9853 is certainly not an equal because we can keep stripping off equals until we get down to this 
four times ten, three T squared. Okay, um, so associated to our Young diagrams, we have residues. Um, and so this is the um, column of our node minus the uh, row of our node modulo E. And the content is um, the collection of residues in that shape, essentially. So, um, for example, um, here are six residues, and we get the content as a collection of all of these residues. And if one plays around hard enough, um, it's easy to see that um, for equal six, there's no other possible um, partition which has this content. And indeed, this is a property of calls. Um, um, so that if you have a unique um, content, you have a call. So um, if you have a block um, of a K-algebra that's indexed by a content um, that is unique, this will be a simple block. And we'll just have a single standard module lying in it labeled by this equal. Okay, so now, um, in general, our standard modules are irreducible. So what are the irreducibles? Well, we can construct these, or try to construct them, um, from quotients of spec modules. So over the cyclic summit, here are our algebras. Um, we have a complete set of anonymizable irreducible modules, um, also with this set grading. And we know these symbols are um, self-dual. So we have a labeling set for these symbols, which are called regular or clasher, which I am not going to define, but there is um, a recursive method in higher levels, um, thanks to Kleshev um, and others, um, to define these simple labels. But in level one, these are very, um, you can explicitly state them. So when working in the Hecker algebra of the symmetric group, um, we know precisely what symbol labels are. Um, so we have regular partitions um, where if you look at your rows, no, um, there aren't E consecutive rows of the same length. And then you have the conjugate notion of this, which is restricted. Um, and so that's um, the conjugate of the regular ones. Okay. And so now if we go back to our symbols, we've got our um, two dual um, spec modules, either the column ones or the ray ones, and we know precisely what their irreducible heights, their labeling set are, it's either the regular partitions or the restricted partitions. Okay, so in general, um, the irreducible is very difficult to understand, and I think maybe as um, Chris mentioned in his talk, this is um, equivalent to understanding the decomposition of this. So um, how can we get a grasp on understanding these irreducible modules? What are their dimensions? Can we determine bases? So to, do, to have a look at this, we're first going to look um, at skewed bit modules. So here we take multi-partitions and we look at the Young diagrams and we want uh, multiplication mu to be contained in lambda. So, and then we take um, the skew diagram to be the complement. So here we have an example. So we remove our uh, pink partition and we end up with our skew shape. So um, skew shapes are generalized um, partitions. So um, we can define spec modules more generally, indexed by these skew shapes. So Rob Mute um, defined um, skew spec modules over affine KL algebras. So corresponding to the cybertomic case, we also have an explicit presentation. And it is, if, if you know the presentation for the usual spec modules, then the one for the skew spec modules is um, what you think is the obvious one. Um, Okay, and similarly, we have a basis, which is again, 
indexed by some standard tablet of our situation and also homogeneous. Okay. So connected with uh, these skew shapes, uh, we want to compare it to higher levels in the cytoatomic Kehler algorithm. So um, we have studied some particular level two um, spec modules and their semi-simplicity. We gave a description, uh, a classification of when they're semi-simple. And this depends on the characteristics. So if provided it's sufficiently large enough, then this level two spec module is semi-simple. And one we gave it a complete description. So we look at a particular example and we see that this spec module in purple, labeled by six six, our two rows, we get um, three summons, and we know precisely what the summons are. So from this, um, we're able to write down the basis for the simple model here. And if you stare at this tablet here um, enough, um, you will see a connection um, with skew shapes. So we get a homomorphism between this simple module and some spec module. And moreover, by our decomposition, we know precisely what the dimension is. And so this, this uh, simple is very big. So uh, obviously the simple here is dimension one, and I think this is dimension 220. Um, so we're picking up the largest simple here. And so because of this, we know precisely that we get an isomorphism between a speech back module and a level two symbol. So one can ask, does this generalize further? Can we get a grasp of many high level symbols from skewed back modules? Okay, so we're now gonna look at our KLR algebra and we're gonna take an idempotent uh, truncation corresponding to skewed shapes. So the content for skewed shapes um, generalizes from that of um, non skewed shapes, normal path, um, multi partitions. So suppose we take two partitions um, and we can form a skew shape from them. So we've got mu is a sub diagram of lambda and we know what the corresponding contents of them are. Then we want to take the content of mu, the sub diagram and the content of the skew shape beta and we want to form an idempotent from these two. Mm. Um, so we take the two idempotents and we pop them side by side. And this is what we want to truncate our up and kill algebra by. Um, and of course, we um, have an algebra homomorphism um, going from the tensor product index by these two contents, labeling the um, sub diagram and the skew shape. Um, so one can look at um, uh, now going from the non truncated Kela algebra. And down to this um, uh, smaller algebra here. Okay. So, um, in Rockman's work on um, Scoochback modules, he defined a, um, uh, a filtration in terms of the restriction of spec modules. So, we want to take a multiplication lambda. And we want to consider um, the set of multi partitions, mu1 through to mu k, that all have the same content and are contained such that mu is contained in lambda. Plus, we have some ordering on these multi partitions. Then he gave a description in terms of restricting the spec module and showed that the, um, in this filtration, the sub quotients. Um, we see that we obtain these skew spec modules. But notice in this result, um, you want to take the set of all multiplications mu that have the same content. And recall before that we know that equals have unique content. 
So suppose we were to take um, a partition that it does a call, um, then this theorem drops down to an isomorphism um, as such. Um, okay. okay, so uh, here is an example. So um, the idempotent um, E alpha theta is a sum of two idempotents um, because there are two possible uh, residue sequences of tab low that you can fit into this D shape down here on the bottom. Right. Okay, but remember our goal, we want to understand irreducible modules. Um, so what we'd like to do is to be able to take an irreducible uh, spec module and apply Mute's um, theorem. So we want to determine when the corresponding skewback module is irreducible. So we can make some assumptions. Well, we can assume that mu is an E core. Well, as we already know, its corresponding module is simple. And we can suppose as well that lambda labels some simple spec module. Then we, of course, know it remains simple um, under um, our truncation. Okay, so what we um, would like to determine is if this blue scooch module is irreducible, but some work needs to be done um, to determine this, right? So on the left-hand side, we have the, um, uh, this restriction of the spec module is simple over our truncation, but on the right-hand side, uh, we're over a different algebra, so. But we can indeed show um, that we do get um, uh, the, the scooch module becomes um, irreducible. So precisely take this case, take our assumptions. Um, we first have a label that's irreducible lambda, and we are cutting out a call, and indeed the corresponding uh, scooch module is irreducible. Okay, so we have this result for skewspec modules, and now we want to import it into um, cyclotomic KLR land. Um, so we're going to be working in level two, and we're going to have the assumptions so that the previous result applies. So we want to take our irreducible skewspec modules, and we want to see for um, which simple um, D labeled by a bipartition um, is our skewspec module isomorphic to. Okay, so if I draw some diagrams, um, we know this is our skew side, so we're cutting out a core here, and we certainly know that we have a homomorphism um, coming from, we can make a cut down. Um, okay, but this is not <coughs> necessarily easy to work out. Um, so what is the corresponding symbol? Well, we certainly know that our spec module has some simple head, but what is this simple? So one can look at some nice cases where this might um, prove doable to understand uh, how these correspond to which to the simples in high levels. And so we'll be looking at one of the first cases of this. So supposing on our speech back side, we've got some picture that is disconnected. So this means that we have no box in this corner here, um, and this will mean um, that we will get an isomorphism in level two. So we can then uh, understand um, uh, level two irreducible spec modules. Okay, so this brings us on to looking um, at when our standard modules are irreducible. So this is really the first step in trying to understand irreducible modules in the higher levels. Okay, so we're first gonna look in level one, what's the story there? So we're in the Hecker algebra of the symmetric group, and we want to know um, a classification of the irreducible spec modules. 
So thanks to many authors and for many papers, we have a classification um, in almost all parameters. So we first need to take a definition and we have a epiadic valuation dependent on a convent characteristic and the characteristic P of our ground field. And so this is dependent on the usual epiadic valuation and notice that it's set to zero when uh, H here is the hook length in our diagram. So whenever our hook length is not divisible by a compound characteristic P, our EP evaluation dies. So we're only interested in those that are divisible by E. So this is the main theorem. So this is for quantum characteristic at least three. And the classification is as follows. So um, a spec model is irreducible if and only if there exists a pair of integers k and l um, such that that lives inside the partition, but k plus one, l plus one doesn't, and it satisfies some conditions. So one is what I would call the irrestricted condition, um, where if you evaluate your, you take your diagram, your young diagram, you, you evaluate all of the hooks and their epiadic valuations, if those that are divisible by E are constant along, along rows, among rows, um, th uh, th that's the condition we need. So we'll have a part of our, thing, of our diagram that will be E restricted. Then you'll have the conjugate version of this based on regular uh, partitions. And so again, you, you evaluate um, you take an evaluation of these epiadics, and if they're constant um, of the along the columns, um, this condition is satisfied. And there's all the other um, nodes, and they must evaluate to zero. Um, so note that this uh, pair of integers is not unique. Okay, and I should make a note. So. Um, Quantum characteristic two behaves differently, um, but we do know that for the symmetric group that this classification holds, and a lot of work has been done um, when we're not in the symmetric group. And there are uh, conjectures for all the remaining cases, and much of the work has already been done in these. Okay, so let's have a look at what these partitions look like. So we're gonna call the partitions that Label the irreducibles in the one JM partitions after James and Mathis. So here is an example of equals three and um, specifying a prime not to be two. So these are the hook lengths of this partition. And I've highlighted all of the hook lengths that are divisible by E. So we can divide those and remove the rest because well, the others will be evaluated to be zero. And then one can divide them. And this is why we have rule out characteristic two here, um, because once you evaluate the piadic valuations on this row, um, these, the, the row will not be constant. So what we see here is we can chop off um, this new partition at the top right, and this is regular. And we can chop up a bit at the bottom, and this is restricted. So yeah, um, these simple labels for irreducible modules um, correspond to both of these regular and restricted partitions um, together um, with something in the middle that um, is usually the four. Okay. So here's a diagram um, to compare the different labels. Okay, so our equals are very special. These have very unique content, labeling us in blocks. We've got our irreducible modules um, in level one, they're either labeled by the regular partitions or the restricted ones, um, if you're working, which world you're working in. And then <laughs> our irreducible labels um, are often these, but sometimes are the more general ones that we've seen in the previous example. Now we want to move to level two, and um, can we define a classification um, for the irreducible spec models in level two? Okay. 
Well, firstly, uh, we can determine that we must have um, a pair of partitions that both index irreducible algebraic models in level one. Okay, so they live somewhere in our uh, right circle here, um, but we can do better than that and restrict our search down. Okay, so supposing we know that Ashbeck module is irreducible, um, then we know roughly where lambda and mu lie. So we know that at least one of the partitions in a bipartition, so either lambda or mu, is regular, and either at least one of lambda and mu is restricted. So you can uh, see this in comparison with the level one story, that in level one you have a regular condition and restricted condition, so they're uh, very interlinked. Okay, so now I'm quickly going to go over branching rules, which Ben already covered. Um, I'm including it here. Yeah. So um, we're going to be working in our psychotomic Kela algebra, and we've got I induction and I restriction functors. Um, such that if we induce a module where I have a typo, of course, here um, from the end of this one, well, uh, this breaks up um, into a direct sum of applying our I induction factors for each of our residues um, on that module. So we have an analogous story for our restriction functors. And of course, we can keep applying these uh, functors and we have a notion of more generalized induction and restriction functors. And so we can uh, um, keep applying this and we see that we get a direct sum um, of k factorial copies um, if we apply our induction factor k times. Um, so the branching rules are very powerful and in particular, we have um, branching rules in terms of the divided power by restriction and induction functors acting on our spec modules in higher levels. So here I've done it for level two. Um, and so this is dependent on addable and removable nodes in our bipartition. So for example, Uh, we shall take uh, the Speck module label by three, one cubed, uh, which is in the middle there, and we'll apply our E2 uh, restriction function to it. And so this corresponds to all the ways in which we can remove a two node. It's got two removable two nodes. Um, so there will be uh, two Speck modules in the filtration. And that order depends on uh, where the removable lives in our original spread module. So at the top, um, we're removing the highest removable node, and at the bottom, we're removing the, remo the lowest removable node. Okay, and one can look at um, the opposite, looking at inducing um, spread module T1 cubed. Well, here there's only a single addable two node. Uh, so this is isomorphic to 3, 1 cubed. So in general, um, as Ben mentioned in this talk, if you um, uh, you take these uh, factors and you can obtain uh, some uh, irreducibility from one module under these factors, if they, by applying each of these functors, you have the same composition length. And so for simples, you just want to keep doing it until you have none left. Um, so for the purpose of this, we're gonna talk about some module being unrestrictable. So this means that um, it is not possible um, to remove any I nodes <coughs> anymore. So, 
So um, you want the situation uh, where if you have a removable node, then it must have an addable node of that same residue, then it will be unrestrictable for all residues. Okay, so in this case, um, what have we got? Three one squared. Uh, on the very left here is unrestricted because it has a removable and an addable node um, of the same residue in both residue two and three. And there are no other possible nodes to remove. Um, but um, three one cubed we can remove because both of its nodes are all of the same residue. Okay, and so supposing we're in this case, so we're unrestrictable, then if we keep applying, um, our ion induction factors and we take the maximum of it before our module dies, um, starting with an irreducible, then we know the resulting model will be irreducible. So this means we can reduce our problem of classifying irreducible Spec modules um, to a smaller family, to these unrestrictable Spec modules. So um, we can try and answer a slightly easier question of um, what, are, what are this family? Irreducibles. Okay. Um, so we can certainly import known irreducibles um, from level one. So we can take some label from level one, we can keep inducing it up um, until we're in level two, and we get some families of um, irreducibles. Um, and certainly, so we can apply this because Thayer's uh, showed that certainly um, if you have a Schmeck module that's irreducible in level one, then taking that with um, an empty partition um, or the empty partition in itself is also irreducible. Okay, so, um, so we can apply Thayer's result. So we know we have, um, we automatically obtain lots of families that are irreducible in level two, um, but these aren't really new in the, in the sense of you're just applying um, induction functions. Um, so any spec module in level two that restricts down to level one by induction is really old hat, it's not that interesting, but what is interesting are those that are new that are not restrictable to level two. So they restrict down to some unrestrictable module in level two. And so these are really the interesting ones that you want to study. Um, okay, so before um, I started this project with Thayer's, um, I did uh, studies and what was in level two. And so these are um, where you take a hook and you separate them and they're in level two. And we get a classification of these when they're irreducible. Um, note that this is independent of the characteristic of the field, um, but here the, the quantum characteristic is at least three. So quantum characteristic two, it's no longer characteristic independent. So what happens in quantum characteristic two? Well, we already have the answer for the symmetric group. Um, this was done by James Mathis. And this is precisely the JM partitions. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we have different characteristics, we don't have a classification for the heck out of the symmetric group. It should be nearly done, hopefully. Um, but we do know that for quantum characteristic two, if we then look in higher levels, what are the irreducible spec modules there? Well, we can just reduce them to the level one situation. So there is no unrestrictable um, spec module um, in level two, one from characteristic two, that is irreducible. They are all of the form of being irreducible in level one. So um, once the classification is complete in equals two, um, we will up to, um, induction have a classification in higher levels for E equals two. So from now on, we're interested in finite E that's at least three, and we want to look at classification um, under these conditions. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to um, introduce a definition. Uh, we're going to look at pairs of partitions, take up high partition, lambda mu, and remember that we uh, want lambda mu both to be um, indexing irreducible spec models in level one. So we're going to call this bipartition um, JM skewable if it satisfies the following. If we have a JM partition mu, so this labels an irreducible spec module in level one, we have some e core such that it's, um, uh, sorry, we have um, a partition that's a core. Um, but it's a rectangular one. So we're taking a rectangle um, a bit because we're looking in level two. Okay. And now we want to specify um, that the skew part um, breaks up into lambda and mu such that it corresponds nicely to the cyclotomic quotient we are taking. So it's for a compatible bi charge. So this means the following. We are either in two different cases, depending on um, how we're arranging our, our skew diagram. So either we've got our by charge kappa one, kappa two this way around. And if we take a column operator, column removal operator on our simple label new, and we we cut it off, we get lambda. And if we do the opposite, we take the we remove the row um, corresponding to our equal, we obtain mu. Okay, so right in that case, or we're in the opposite case where mu and lambda are reversed. Um so Fayez and I um uh, have a conjecture in terms of the irreducible spec modules in this case. And so defining them here in terms of unrestrictable shapes, these are precisely in level two, the irreducible spec modules are irreducible um, if and only if. Um, we're either coming from a level one story, so one of the components is the next partition, or we're precisely in the previous case um, where they're both non-zero, um, but they are skewable in a JM partition. So this is still a conjecture up to some degenerate cases. So supposing we have large enough pairs, um, this is done. Um, and so once this is complete, there are further questions which would be nice to um, answer. Um, so one of the things would be to have an explicit combinator combinatorial description of these level two um, irreducible labels of spec modules. Um, so that's one thing to do. And the other thing is, of course, these are irreducible, so they match some simple label. D new, what is the simple label? <clears throat> so we have a conjecture in this case, um, and this, um, in general, it's a difficult problem because um, it, it, it's trying to generalize regularization to higher levels, which is difficult. So, um, thank you very much. <laughs>